Hello and welcome. We've got a restoration of an old Sears drill here. This is a hand drill from, I think, the 1960s. Uh, 3 8 inch chuck, quarter horsepower, 3 amps. Picked it up at a garage sale for about $5. We're going to do a teardown, open it up, look at the guts inside, clean the grease out, change what we need to, make sure the brushes are going good. Then we're going to give it a nice paint job. Nice sparkle metallic green from Auto Air. It's going to look great when this thing's done, trust me. Meantime, you can see it's had, you know, it's a little tired. Uh, I've seen worse, certainly. But why don't we uh, fire this up and uh, see how she sounds right now. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so we'll take a look at this. All right, so we got about five or six screws to get out of here before we can crack the case open. So let's fast forward through this. Get this thing open and see what we're dealing with on the inside. All right, well, a few more screws than I thought. Let's crack this thing open and see what we got. Yeah, it looks pretty good on the inside, to be honest. Not dirty at all, really. Let's see, the gearing up front looks good. Nice, solid metal design. The chuck spins well. The grease is a little bit tired, not terrible. That gear is moving pretty nicely, so that's uh, definitely a good sign. Doesn't seem any junk or broken teeth in here. I don't see anything floating around, at least. Let's see what we got. Uh, the rotor is encased. Oh, there's a nice metal fan there. There's a nice, it's, the rotor is connected to the gearing with a, looks like a bronze or brass bushing or sleeve of some sort. Not atypical for this kind of design. I did a previous teardown where a similar design was, was uh, in effect. Let's see the trigger. Nice, good clicking there. That's nice and solid. We don't have to worry about that. Brushes look okay. Looks like they got about half their material still in there. So that's okay, I suppose. Uh, wiring's good. We got the green ground wire properly connected to the case. Always important. Strain relief on the wiring looks good. Rotor looks nice. All in all, pretty clean. Also, we've got notice we've got a brass bushing in the back too, where the rotor connects to the rear of the housing. What else? Oh, uh, the windings look good. A little, a little dusty, but not bad. Grease is a little bit tired. We're going to change that out. Not terrible. At least there's still some grease in it. So that's always a good sign. Okay, so let's uh, let's start taking this thing apart. See how she looks. We'll grease it up, put it back together, and then we'll start some fun things with the painting. All right, let's get the chuck out and see what we got here. It should slide right out. Come on out. There we go. Pretty easy. So we've got that single gear there connecting it to the rest of the assembly. Got a couple of sleeves there between in the chuck. Spin smoothly. Nice solid metal gear. You know, and this felt pretty substantial. This wasn't some cheap pot metal gear like you might see in a more modern drill. Got some heft, no broken teeth, no wear that I could tell even on the teeth, really. Uh, the chuck itself is Supremo brand, so I'm not sure. That may have been a bargain basement one for the 1960s, I don't know. Notice we've got a bronze or a brass sleeve there on both ends. Comes off like that, looks pretty good. Nice again, nice substantial metal, nothing plastic in here, which is always both a surprise and a delight, so that's good to see. Again, we'll replace some of the grease on there, which is a little tired, but again, could be in worse shape. So let's keep going from here. All right, what else we got? Let's pull the stator and the rotor out. There we go. Again, looks decent. Decent shape. All metal design here on that rotor, on that fan. Uh, let's see what do we have here. We've got the brushes. How does that look? How much uh, one of the brushes? It's got you know, it's at least halfway. Still has half its material left, so that's good. It sprung right out of there. You can see the spring right there that held it in. Let's see what else we have here. Just checking the wiring. It all looks pretty good. Let's see, what else we got? Um, what to do next? Let's see, we got more gearing here. Does this stuff come out? I don't know if I want to... I think I can wedge that stuff out. Oh, uh, what do you got? We got a few shims in here. We'll keep track of those. Probably to prevent wear and tearing on against the case itself. Put that in there for something to rub against so that you can replace it if you need to. Let's see, smaller gear. 
that all looks good. Substantial. I'm not sure if I want to take that out necessarily. It looks fine. I don't see any broken teeth, so maybe we'll just let sleeping dogs lie and not worry about that. We'll clean this out and um, take it from here. All right, so what I did was I cleaned out the innards of these guys a little bit, scraped out some of the dirt and the grime, got some degreaser on there. Uh, I left the gearing areas alone. I did pull out the grease in there as best I could. So we'll put some fresh grease in those sections when the time comes. Um, so this wasn't too bad. It didn't look terrible, but there was, you know, this had been used for some woodworking. You can tell there was a, a decent amount of sawdust in here, especially near the gills and the fins there. So we'll clean that as best we could. So the next thing to do is we're going to take this, we're going to scuff it down with a red maroon pad, get it primed up after we're done scuffing it, spray it with some primer, and then we'll uh, repaint it. Uh, just the outsides and then we'll be ready to start packing things up put in some new grease and uh, get this thing uh, reassembled we're going to mask off the badge down there could take that off uh, drilling those things out easy enough just to mask it off frankly we'll go that way and then again we'll just scuff this off with the uh, maroon pad and then get ready to start priming it Okay, so let's uh, scuff this down now. I've got a maroon pad out. I'm going to get every nook and cranny I can on this. The idea is to give, rough up as much, all the surface that's going to get paint so that the paint will stick to it. If it's still smooth, uh, the paint's going to delaminate and it's going to look terrible. So you've got to take your time here. Go over every nook and cranny, every spot that the paint's going to hit. I'm going to mask off that label, by the way. I'm not going to remove it. It's just too much work. I don't want to cut off the bolts and all that stuff. Easy enough to do. So just again, take your time on this. Notice... I'm going into the gills here, getting every little bit that I can. Again, the idea is paint's got to stick to something. you got to rough up the surface. You don't have to remove everything, just rough it up a little bit so that the primer has something to bite into. There we go. Then when we're done, we're going to wash this down with some mineral spirits and degreaser, get all the dust off. Then we'll be ready for paint and primer. So uh, we'll speed through the rest of this right now and uh, see you on the other side. All right, now to prime it up. We cleaned everything off. We washed it all down with mineral spirits, got all the dust off, all the sanding dust, so now it's just time to spray it. I'm using a 2K primer from either, I think, Summit Racing or Eastwood. I can't remember. It's the same stuff in the can either way. About $30 per quart, which sounds a little pricey, but a little bit goes a long way on this. Hardly used hardly any. Also, because I used a detail gun, uh, there wasn't much um, wasn't much material used. Uh, again, going using light strokes here, that way you don't run any risk of paint drips or runs or anything like that. A couple of coats and we're all set. We're going to be ready for paint in just a moment here. Again, this stuff, we'll let it dry for a day then we'll paint it and it's going to look great. So stick around for more. Paint's coming right up. All right, what we're going to use here is Auto Air Color Waterborne Paint. This one is a pearl green, so it's going to look terrific. A can of this is about seven or eight bucks and we, again, we're not using much. We're going to spray this with an airbrush. So we use even less, but again, a little bit goes a long way. This is going to look absolutely great. Stick around. All right, here we go. I've already put a dust coat on. I'm using a Badger Crescendo 175 airbrush. Not bad, I think $50, $55 out the door most times. It's got a large tip on it, which is great. And you can see I'm just dusting stuff on. Not going heavy, and you don't have to do that. In fact, if you do, you're gonna wind up with paint runs and drips. We're gonna take multiple coats at this. You can see the color's already coming on there. It's gonna look great. Now, because this is a waterborne paint, it doesn't have any clear coat within it. It has no scratch resistance, so we're going to have to clear it up, use some clear coat afterwards. So it's going to look a little bit hazy, just the base coat. But again, you see it's just going on nice and easy. It's going to look terrific when this thing's done. Light coats, we're going to do several, uh, several of these things. No need to try to get full coverage on each coat. You're just going to wind up layering paint on and, and winding up again with runs and drips, which is not what you need. You can see I'm just going... Very carefully spraying this way and that, trying to get every nook and cranny, not worrying about full coverage. We'll let it dry. For, I think uh, five minutes between coats really is enough, especially for a, a waterborne paint. So you can see it's looking great right now. I'm standing, I don't know, seven, eight inches back. Again, just re removing any risk of getting a paint run on this thing. You can see it's already nice. Almost there again. I'm aiming down right now towards the edges. That's always a worrisome spot. Got to make sure you get everything in there. And we're just about done here. So next up will become clear coat. 
All right, let's get ready to clear coat. I'm using what's known as a high impact clear. This is not inexpensive stuff. This is for automotive use mostly, but I've got some laying around. It's great stuff. You don't have to use the high, high end stuff. Again, I've got a lot. I've got, I've got it here. May as well use it. I'm not going to use very much. I'm going to airbrush it on, which again means less overspray, less wastage. You could get by again if you go to Summit Racing, if you go to Eastwood, get a you know a quart of twenty five dollar clear coat if you want, and it'll bring out just almost as much shine as what we're going to have here. It's going to be almost as tough. Now the Cam Tamco stuff is designed for things like football helmets or skateboards, so it'll go great with a drill. But again, Summit Racing or Eastwood, one of those names they'll be fine for you as well, so not to worry. Or if you want to, you can also use Rust-Oleum Spray clear out of a can. Wouldn't necessarily recommend that because it's not quite as tough and glossy, but again, it's up to you. All right, I mentioned before, just the base coat looks pretty matte and flat. But you notice as you're putting the clear coat on here, already you're seeing some gloss and shine come out. And this is just one quick coat. This is the tech coat. Notice it's really flown out of that... Uh, that airbrush, I think it's, I've got the airbrush, I think at 30 PSI, so a little bit more than usual, but again, I'm keeping my distance so I don't wind up just pounding it on and winding up with runs and drips and all that, things you don't need. Again, I'm hitting it at every angle I can get, making sure I don't miss a spot, because if you do, you'll find out it'll look all dull and not very good. So we're just taking our time, taking a look, going through. This is the first coat, we're going to do several ones, but we'll skip that part. You get the idea. So this thing's going to look great. We'll show you in just a moment how it came out. There you have it. Wow, look at that shine and gloss. Not only is it shiny and beautiful, but it's tough as nails too. That Tamco High Impact Clear really does have a lot of scratch resistance. Again, you don't have to use that. You can use Summit Racing cheaper clears. You'll get a nice gloss. I just happen to have it laying around. I figured why not use it. I'm using an airbrush so it goes on without too much overspray. But look at that result. You gotta love it. So we'll start putting this together real soon. All right, well, before we put it together, Let's clean up the chuck a little bit. Again, this is, a, I think, Supremo brand. Not much to look at right now. So we'll put it on the wire wheel for a few minutes, get it shined up, looking great, and then we'll start uh, getting ready to put things together. Here we go. All right, here's the end result. Look at that. Nice and silver. Looks great. A few minutes on the wire wheel really makes all the difference in the world. You can see it just it looks brand new, basically. Very, very nice. So this is going to look great when we put it together. Of course, this is made in the USA. Again, oh, sorry, Supreme brand is what it's called. So anyway, let's start putting this thing together finally. All right, time to start putting this together. We're going to some, put some molly grease on this. This is for usually for automotive purposes. Axles, things like that. It'll work fine here, too. It's not too thick, so I'm not worried about that. We'll just reach in here, grab a lump, and just, we, we don't want to go super, super heavy in this, but they did have a fair amount in there. We're going to spread this around. It looks like a lot right here, but we're going to even things up. And we're going to lube up the individual gears as well, as, the, as well as the passageways like we're doing right here. So we'll speed things up, get a little music going while we do it, and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, we got things greased up, now let's put it together. We've got the rotor inside of the stator. Bushing's in place. Notice the gear on the end of the bushing, that's got some lube on it too. We'll just carefully place this in. Yeah, let's take a look here real quick. So again, we've got enough grease there, we don't have an inordinate amount. That's You don't want to overdo it either. So we've got just the right amount of grease there. So we'll just start putting this thing in together carefully and we'll take it from there. Right, briefly, I just wanted to show how we install the brushes. We've got a spring, we've got a screw to hook it to the housing, and we've got the brush there. We've got probably, I guess, maybe two-thirds of the original brush left, so I'm just going to reuse it. No need to get a new one. We've got a black housing here, if I can pull it out. So what happens in that housing, the spring goes in there, 
and then you push the brush in and then there's a little hook that goes and let me just show you real quick so the spring goes in there the brush goes on top of it but at the same time you've got this hook that goes in there and hooks onto the bottom of the brush where is that little that's li the little nubbin on there so that keeps it from popping out but the spring provides tension so that it's always pushing against the rotor a little bit hard to hard to explain let me see if I can try to install it for you guys here it's a little bit tricky but we'll get it done hold on just a sec Okay, notice I've got the hook on the bottom of the brush there. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to spot. And then we've got the spring below. So we're going to push it through. And there's a slot for the wiring to go through. So there we go. Got it in like that. Notice there's a slot in the back where that wire, the black wire is. I know it's a little hard to see. I'm sorry about that. So now we've got the wire on the hooking on to the spring, to the brush at the bottom, and the spring below that providing pressure. So we're putting it in. Now it's pressing against the rotor, the top of the brush. Now all we have to do is take that screw right there and screw the uh, plastic casing for the brush into the rotor, I mean, sorry, into the body, and then it'll hold it in place that way. Notice I'm starting it by hand. We'll finish it off, so now we've got, I already did the top brush, and you can see the white wire coming up at the top there. This one's black. The one we're doing right now is the black wire at the bottom of the brush. Again, I apologize that it's not as zoomed in as it could be. I just wanted to show you guys how generally to do this. It works basically the same on all drills, or any power tool, really, that's brushed. Okay, so we'll screw this in. No need to see that. Let's take it from here in just a sec. Okay, let's button this up finally. Get things together. Got the case over there. Just a matter of, of course, you've got to, you're trying to keep 20 pieces in, in place while you fit this in. It's a tight squeeze, so there's going to take a little bit of testing and planning, making sure all the wiring is where it is and it's not getting pinched as you put it in, making sure the gearing's in place. You know, it's having a little trouble at the front there. Not quite fitting. Let's take a look at that a sec. Let's see, I'm pushing down. The chuck doesn't want to quite go in. I bet that gear popped up a little bit for the chuck. Let's see. How's that working? Yeah, a little bit of something's catching there. Oh, that little shim came out. That's what was going on. Okay. Let's try again. See what I mean? Just one thing after another. Meanwhile, while we're doing that, take a look at the gloss and shine on that case. Whoops, just took it away. All right, just make sure the trigger's in place. There we go. Put that case. It's so glossy and shiny. Um, you get the idea. Not much to show here, really. So we're just going to test fit it. We're going to put those bolts in, and then we'll take a look at it once all is said and done. Look at that. All buttoned up. Looking shiny and great. I wish you could see this live. That nice pearl green is just, it really pops. Uh, the, the camera's not doing it justice here. Meantime, the chuck also looks great, thanks to our wire wheeling. Just You can see the pearl right there if you catch the light just right. And, and also, of course, with the clear coat on there, not only is it shiny, but it's very scratch resistant, also UV resistant, um, solvent resistant as well. It's just, you know, it's the best of all worlds here, really. So it's looking good. I'll touch up a couple of little things before we're done, and then we'll uh, take another look at it again and fire it up and see how it looks, see how it runs. Stick around. Now you might ask, how does it sound? Well, here's how it sounds. Yep. Sounds and works great. All right, time for the acid test. Let's drill a hole and see what happens. Hopefully this works. Here we go. Nice. Look at that. Oh, wow, just cut right through that thing like butter. Now I can't even get it out. It's so deep. Wow. Okay, there we go. Looks terrific. Wonderful work. All right, next up, we'll do a final tour of this, see how it looks, and take it from there. Well, there she is, the final product. Look at that. Nice green gloss. Good pearl, good metallic to it. It's just, it came out wonderfully. That clear coat really makes it shine, as you can see there. And it's nice and tough. What a final product. Well, I want to thank you for watching the video. I hope it inspires you on your own projects. Take an old drill of yours or some other old tool, scuff it down, give it some new paint, and you'd be surprised at the results, like we've seen here. This just came out wonderfully. That's all she wrote. Thanks again, folks, for watching. I really appreciate it.